Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that Circularity Scotland expects to make £57 million a year by the public failing to return containers, and that this is part of the company's business model. Minister Lorna Slater. Circularity Scotland is a not for profit company established by industry and made up of producers, retailers, hospitality wholesalers, and trade associations. Everyone who pays a deposit on a drinks container will be able to reclaim that deposit in full. Any unredeemed deposits from Scotland's deposit return scheme will be reinvested into keeping the costs of running the scheme as low as possible for producers of all sizes across Scotland. This model is in line with the best practice seen in other schemes around the world. Under the DRS regulations, the scheme administrator is required to meet a minimum of 80% return rates in the first year and 90% in subsequent years. Failure to meet these targets would result in financial penalties, establishing a very strong incentive for Circularity Scotland to ensure high return rates. Brian Whittle. I thank the Minister for that answer, but the Scottish Government's own full business case for the scheme states explicitly, explicitly that unredeemed deposits are anticipated to make up between 32 per cent and 43 per cent of Circularity Scotland's revenue. It goes to, on to say that modelling assumes that the 90 per cent capture rate of containers is achieved by year three of the scheme's operating and it is maintained for the remainder of the 25 years. That seems pretty clear. The higher the capture rate, the lower the revenue for Circularity Scotland. Surely the Minister accepts that this creates a perverse incentive for Circularity Scotland to avoid increasing the capture rate. Minister. Uh, the member is, is uh, a little bit out of date on what he said. When the dates were moved forward for the launch of the scheme, the dates for the recycling targets were not changed. So the recycling target is 80% in the first year and 90% in the subsequent years of that scheme. The successful deposit return schemes off the, around the world are based on this principle of producer responsibility, and they are funded in three ways. One is through the producer fees, the secondly is through the value of the materials gathered by the scheme, and the third is from the unredeemed deposits. Uh, this is true as well for the UK government scheme. In the UK government's own consultation published in January on their depository scheme that they intend to bring in England and Wales and Northern Ireland, they have said, and I quote, where a container is not returned, the value of deposit on that container will be held by the DMO, that's their word for their administrator. This is an unredeemed deposit and is potentially of significant value stream for the DMO, helping to fund the operation of the scheme. And Thank this you, is Minister. a common funding stream found in many international DRSs. Thank you. Brian Whittle. Of course, even if Circularity Scotland were to increase the capture rate, we don't know how, how such a loss of revenue might affect them because the Scottish Government has, in their seemingly endless quest to muddy the waters around the scheme, shrouded Scotland's DRS administrator in secrecy, creating a private company immune to freedom of information and, despite being producer-led, as the Minister is so fond of saying, is utterly unwilling to tell producers signing up to the scheme what potential liabilities they are accepting responsibility for, including the terms of the contract with Biffa. Will the Minister see sense, pause this opaque, badly designed, potentially disastrous mess of a deposit return scheme now, or does she remain determined to leave us guessing all about whether it will even reach launch, given it will, be, it will depend on who wins the SNP leaders' election? Thank you, Mr. How Whittle. are business supposed to plan a way ahead in that environment of uncertainty? Minister. Uh as passed by this Parliament, the regulations call for this to be an industry-led scheme. And Circularity Scotland is the not-for-profit com company established by industry. And I have a list here of the members of CSL, which include trade associations, the Scottish uh, Society of Independent Brewers, Scottish Soft Drinks Association, Wine and Sp Spirit uh, Trade Association, and, and many more. Uh, Diageo, Coca-Cola, Heineken, Sainsbury's, uh, Marks & Spencer, Little, and so on. These are the members of CSL. This is who CSL has created CSL and they are responsible for making sure that it works for them. CSL is a private, not-for-profit company whose responsibility is to help businesses in Scotland comply with the regulations as passed by this Parliament. And they are working towards, and have reassured me, that they are working towards a go-live date of the 16th of August as agreed by this Parliament. Thank you. There's